Hello and welcome to uh, Explain 10. This is uh, the BAE Jetstream 32. It's a payware plane that I got uh, a while ago. I am, I'm running it in 64-bit. <coughs> Explain uh, 10 uh, patched 20 or something like that. So this is the uh, the release, first release of 64-bit out of beta. So it's um, interesting. It all seems to work rather well. Um, doing a flight simulator economy flight <coughs> from uh, Montana to Wyoming. Is that right? I think that's right. No, Wyoming to... Oh god, where am I? Yeah, Montana to Wyoming. That's correct. Cool. So, the uh, first thing I'm going to do is jump into my uh, direct to GPS to make it nice and simple. I'm not going to use the um, air traffic control. Uh, I'm at Kilo Golf Foxtrot Alpha KGFA, the IKO code. Um, and I'm going to Kilo Romeo India Whiskey. So I'll punch that in. Alright, okay. <coughs> So if you don't know what flight simulator economy is, it's basically <coughs> adds a obviously an economy, but it adds a game element to the flight simulator. Whereas you know it's a sandbox normally, and you learn the aircraft, and then you kind of think, what do I do now? <coughs> the economy uh, element gives you lots of stuff to do. So um, Riverton, that looks good to me. I'm going to hit enter direct track 140 degrees, 290, that ties in with my flight plan, so that's good. I'll change the uh, the indicator to GPS, so we're now navigating via the, the GPS uh, data, and this is now pointing off to uh, indicate our track that we need to follow, so that's good. Um, I'll just get some housekeeping stuff done, so seatbelts, non-smoking, I'll put my reading light on, I'll get a left hand down light. On, and the centre, and a few instruments, and a bit of roof. <coughs> it's raining, so I'll turn on windscreen wiper, might as well do both sides. I've uh, got a co-pilot, so I'll send him to the bathroom. Gone. Um, it is cold, so I'm, I'm going to uh, turn off the oil cooling. Um, if our fuel lines freeze, then soon after takeoff, uh, an engine will just conk out, and that's not cool. Um, it's also uh, going to be pretty cold heading north, so get um, demisting, heating, stall, ice protection, uh, automatic de-icing, long cycle engine, get the de-icing up and running. Uh, we want flaps, probably one, for takeoff, I think. Didn't actually read that in the manual, but um, I assume that's right. We'll also turn our desired heating to, or the heating bug, to the runway. So we can turn that on and not dive into a turn straight away. And I'm about ready for flight, so I'll go into the plugin. <coughs> this is X Economy, which plugs into Flight Simulator Economy. And in Flight Sim 10, the Microsoft uh, simulator, it's a simple application, but with X-Plane, um, it runs as a plugin, so I don't need to alt-tab and do it that way. So I've logged in. On the website, I've picked a few jobs. You can see four jobs there. Four people, four people, four people, and five people. I've got uh, this plane rented, so I've got eight hours left on that and we've started our flight so I can close that now and now our fuel and our weight and everything has pulled in the um, the actual uh, the data off the website so that gets updated so parking brake off <coughs> engine looks good we'll just uh, get this bird rolling Now, I've got to ease the 
throttle forward because it over revs and then the feathering adjusts to uh, pull the RPM back. So just continuously rolling that forward. It's a bit of torque, so I'm not the best at uh, flying an X Plane 10 in general because I'm pretty new to it and I don't really know exactly when to rotate, so we'll just see how this feels. I've over revved it a bit. So we should be fine to rotate now. Yep, just keep ourselves basically level and I'll start trimming. Good rate of climb, so gear goes up. <coughs> and I'll do about four, 1,000 or 1,500 feet per minute climb, like so. I'm just gonna ease back on the, uh, ease forward on the stick and trim that in so I can get nice and neutral. Save my arm from doing all the work. Bit of a left roll. Okay, so we're right on the red line with the exhaust gas temperature. I might just pull that back a bit. And we'll do about 1000. Speed's pretty low, but I'll get that uh, vertical speed heading hold, get the servos going. And I'll set my desired altitude to, how far we going, 291, I can go nice and high, say 18,000. Which is there. <coughs> and I'll arm the altitude select, so as we climb, we're at 5.5, as we climb to 18,000 feet it will intersect that altitude and uh, we'll go into altitude hold at that point. <coughs> Check out that animation. And over there, it's awesome. Alright. So I'll just check flaps up, gear up. <coughs> Airspeed is almost at cruising speed so I might just uh, I'll pull back on the engines a bit because we are stressing them out quite a bit okay so things to check oil temperature if that gets to zero and I've shut off the coolant valve so it shouldn't drop to zero but that, that would uh, kill an engine that wouldn't be good that is at fraction over 100% so we're good there on the uh, engine torque's good and exhaust gas temperature is good no warning lights <coughs> right, automatic ice protection's working it alternates between uh, wings and tail alright so we'll start our turn off to where we are flying off to today I'm not using air traffic control if I did, I'd probably use the uh, the Vatsim if I was more motivated. So we're going to swing it right back. We need to line up this line, which is our uh, <coughs> our track. That's indicating that our uh, our flight plan is off to the right. So that's our heading we need to follow. We're way off to the left of it, so we'll just get that lined back up. here with the, uh, this is basically the same thing, that green box there indicates that we are off to the right, well sorry, our track that we need to follow is off to the right. <coughs> it's interesting, there's not really much in the way of clouds, oh no there is clouds, take that back. But it seems to always rain on these uh, windshields. And even though you can do any airspeed, the raindrops just kind of stay there. You'd think that they would uh, be beating off, but nope, 
Don't do it. Okay, so pretty happy with where we are now. We can turn off the seatbelts. Up the cabin. Ta da! Now I'm gonna have to edit this because uh, 88 minutes of flight more, and there's no way that I'm going to uh, find interesting things to uh, talk about for 88 minutes whilst flying in a straight line. Um, you can see the quality of this aircraft though, you can see the reflections, which is very nice. You know, you can get right in. Even, even down here. I don't think any of that stuff's modelled. But, uh, it's quite a nice aircraft. I'll just jump outside for a bit. You can see I'm using the, the BAE, uh, the British Airways skin as well, which is a bit weird for the, my location in the middle of uh, the United States. slowly moving. No, maybe not. Right, what is the direct track 141? Oh yep, now it's definitely moving now. Alright, we'll start our turn. You can see just uh, quite easy like so. Now I have bound the the heading bug, see I can move it left and right, to my joystick. Um, and the reason I do that is sometimes spinning the dials with your mouse is a real pain. It's not in this aircraft, but um, some of the stock ones, manipulating the dials, it's just painful. So I actually just bound it, I can just turn the aircraft just by moving the hat that I have available. Alright, so we're just about intersected. It's very slowly coming into the centre line there, and my heading track is 160. and fly it for me. Alright, altitude, got about 4,000 to go. Speed's quite slow. speed I think for a climb.
Right, so the trick with Flight Simulator Economy is that you can't manipulate the position of your aircraft because it's tracking the fuel burn that you have and it's tracking the, um, the price per hour of the renting the aircraft in game time um, and also the number of hours that you fly there's a limit to how many hours you can fly every 48 hours uh, if you were to sort of teleport yourself forward that would invalidate the flight for the job because it's basically cheating um, if you can do that you can accelerate time obviously um, because that also accelerates game time so it all kind of correlates together but the way that X-Plane uh, most of the time accelerates is to double your um, or uh, multiply your ground speed artificially which uh, just doesn't work because time is going at one time speed but your ground speed is multiplied by you know 10 times or whatever um, so your fuel burn rate and everything's all thrown out and uh, the rental of your aircraft uh, the problem with accelerating time is uh, the flight model in X-Plane needs to calculate uh, the forces on the foils in the body basically every second or every frame um, and if you accelerate too much then it can't keep up and it can't do that so the flight model falls apart so depending on your frame rate that will actually um, tell you how much you can accelerate time and so if you are uh, at 40 frames per second which is pretty good you're only really going to get about two times time acceleration because the minimum I think is about 20 frames per second or slightly less and it needs that to keep up with uh, the, f the, uh, the flight model uh, calculations so that's uh, a bit of a drawback it's not a huge one um, typically I'd get um, you know three to four times time acceleration that sort of max maybe six times time acceleration alright so we're coming up to our cruising altitude and I've just I've got to keep my eye on firstly some weather is coming up <coughs> really? Uh, not really not too bad and uh, our speed so our speed will dramatically increase when we level out and so there's no auto throttle on this plane <coughs> Which means I need to reduce the uh, reduce my power appropriately. Otherwise, we'll overspeed and bad things will happen. So we're coming up to 17.9. Altitude capture is flicked on. Vertical speed slowing down, and we will stop at about 18,000, like so. You can see here our true ground speed on the GPS climbing up, cruising speed on this puppy is twin, uh, sorry, 220 knots you can see that on the indicated airspeed as well which is quite a bit lower now alright, and I'm not the best at doing this, I usually sit it at around, I don't know 100 kilograms an hour of fuel flow or 50% or torque or whatever feels right or just um, just going to reduce down the power to 60% torque the CIE speed is still ticking up really quickly so that's about our cruising speed there I think anyway I'm not a pilot so I could be doing all this totally wrong in which case please tell me so I'll reduce it down to 50% torque Alright, 
Now it's at this point that I generally look and plan my approach because I'm not using any traffic control. I can land wherever I want. Oh, look at those clouds. <coughs> and uh, I have to figure out what kind of dog leg do I have to make from my direct track to actually get onto a runway heading. So if I just uh, jump into the charts, I can see there's, um, there's two runways, so two directions on each, so four ways to land. Uh, one of them's actually got ILS, which would be quite nice. Uh, and the approach heading is 281 on that. It's a 281, that's, <coughs> that's almost a full right turn, so I'd have to fly down the other way. See my speed is decreasing. That's fine. Uh, and that's an 8,000 foot runway, which is plenty. Or I can land on the approach 101. So heading 101, and I'm reading this up off the FS Economy website, uh, where there's a button under the airfield that says charts, and it gives you the firstly the um, the altitude of the runway, which is actually 5,500 feet. <coughs> and I know when I'm starting my approach to be about 1,500 feet above that. So I'm going to be starting my approach at 7,000 feet. Um, I'm probably going to go for the 101 heading approach, which is runway 10, because the runway heading is the, the runway number is the heading divided by 10. So 101, there's direct east, 90 degrees, so it's there. So the runway is going to be that heading, but from there, so like that. So to get onto that runway, I'm going to have to do a right turn, then a left turn, to approach the runway on a heading of 101 at 7,000 feet, <coughs> a few miles out, maybe f 5 or 10 miles out. So 10 miles out will be at 7,000 feet, that's kind of my flight plan for a visual approach. It's a hot day. Okay. I think that is snow. Or is that a light? That's a light there lighting that up. Must be. So there's no stone. No ice. And the outside air temperature is now below zero. So uh, the anti icing should be doing its job. Let's check for any ice on the wings. No, we're quite good. do is a bit of a cut and uh, pick this up again when we're a little bit closer to town. So we can start that right 
turn to get in on the runway. You can see that our altitude is ticking down, we should have a bit of airspeed as a result, so I'll just pull back on the throttles. And we can turn on uh, seatbelt and landing light. So I've uh, chucked it into heading mode, that's uh, told the autopilot to fly off towards my heading bug, the desired heading there, whatever it is, and uh, you'll see that our course starts drifting off to the left as we fly off to the right, and that's going to allow us to get the runway heading to be the heading uh, of where the airfield is from us so that when we turn towards the airfield we're driving basically right down the runway with a bit of correction. Uh, there's no ILS so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, distance is 30 miles. Direct track is 141. I need to get that down to whatever it was, 100 and, oh, what was it? <coughs> 110 from memory? 101. So the approach is going to be 101. Speed 233, that's probably a bit fast, so I'll just pull back. ETA 7 minutes, but we're not actually flying towards the airfield right now. Um, 29 miles to go. So we can't see it yet, but it's out there. We're bleeding off the airspeed about 14,500 right now. If needs be, I could always do a uh, a circle around to spiral down towards it. I mean, it's uh, no problem in a flight sim to have to do a couple of circles to bleed off this, the uh, altitude. Seven thousand to go. increasing our descent there and actually I think the runway is in sight right there and it's saying that we are a little bit low which is a bit strange <coughs> okay so I might just take uh, manual control at this point what could go wrong okay we'll slow the aircraft right down get the torque to zero bleed off a lot of speed. We can kill that. Just zoom in so you can get a look. There it is there. We're just about perfectly lined up. 
need 17 miles to go. <coughs> uh, as soon as I turn them off, it starts raining again. So let's keep those on. Alright, landing lights are on, seatbelts are on. At this point, I'm gonna drop the landing gear. Landing gear is down and locked. Speed is dropping. Get some flaps. As the speed drops, I want to land probably, I don't know, 110, 115 knots, or something like that. It's probably a bit fast, but we've got a pretty full load. Flaps and it says we're low. All right. <coughs> Get the uh, engines back online. We can start lowering this descent. It's a lot of flying adjusting the trim, um, but it's actually really slow adjustment so you end up holding the trim button down forever so I don't know if I should rebind it to a fast trim adjust or something but it's a bit of a pain there we go two red two white that is right on the glide slope <coughs> not that I usually bother with such things okay descent rate is yep yeah, 300 actually yeah. But some speed. Speed's good. I'm just gonna go off to the right a little bit. I think uh, might have a bit of crosswind. And it looks like we are high. Is that right? Yeah, three white. So I'm a bit high now. 500 feet per minute sync rate, 124 knots, and ETA is 5 minutes. So just reducing power and, uh, oh, very high now. <coughs> so we'll reduce power, nose down to keep the speed up. If I'd flown from the other direction, which would have been a bit of a longer trip to loop around, I could have actually just flown a autopilot approach with the ILS system. Um, but no, this is a bit more fun. As long as I don't crash and have to redo it. Alright, flaps. Full flaps. Ooh. Flaps, slow down quite a bit. <coughs> uh, still a little bit high, we've got three white, which is high. Better than three red, but um, I have two of each. Unfortunately, I kind of have to take my hand off the psych, uh, the, the yoke and roll the mouse forward to zoom which guess I lose control for a bit so
approached. Oh man, I'm high. Just kill the power. Zoom in. You can't see much traffic on that road, but normally there's lots of traffic moving along the roads. <coughs> right, can quite easily see the peppy lights there with the uh, three white, meaning I'm still high. You can see the city is off behind it. It's my airspeed. 07. Oh, a bit high. There's the 500 feet warning. 400. Oh, a bit high. Back on track. 300. <coughs> I aim for those uh, skid marks just to be cool. Says I'm low now. Pretty much just going to ignore that and land. Bit of a hard landing. So, down on the ground I can uh, pull the power levers back to ground, there we go, to uh, <coughs> taxi, and with that turn on the parking brake, which will bring us to a stop. Just park on the runway just for, um, just for the purposes of flight simulator economy. Now the things you've got to do is shut the engines off, put on the parking brake, you'll see it freezes and that and that freeze has registered that the flight is over so if I open it up, <coughs> your flight's logged and uh, in the actual uh, the website I'll have maybe 10 grand sitting there waiting for me uh, for conducting the flight so hopefully you've found that uh, kind of interesting the, BAE Jetstream uh, 32 by uh, X Aviation. I uh, bought it off the X Aviation website, so uh, let me know what you think, and uh, hopefully, I'll be flying this thing again soon.